I try, the more I fall. I finally see Welcome the to the Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm so glad to be with you again today. I'm, I hope I can wind up the rest of the book of Romans. I told you I'm not going to go verse by verse in the last part of Romans, and I've just finished Romans 11, and I want to begin by what I believe should have been right after Romans 8, or right after, right at the beginning of Romans 8. I think this is, this verse belongs there. Now, I'm sure the wisdom of God and the mind of Christ laid the scriptures out exactly the way they're supposed to be laid out, so I don't argue with that because God is sovereign, and uh, Paul wrote this certainly by the Spirit of God and by the mind of Christ, so there's no way that I'm going to argue with that. However, the uh, first, the part, the Romans chapter 8 says this, chapter uh, 12 says this, I beseech you, I mean, this sounds like I beg you, I beg you, brother, I beg you, brothers and sisters in Christ, therefore, brethren, any, anybody that's a Christian, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, your bodies are not holy. <laughs> That's uh, actually, uh, the Bible says that your body is uh, the temple of the, of the Holy Ghost. So it's holy by virtue of what it contains, you see. So present your body a living sacrifice. You're alive, but yet Paul says, I die all the day long. And it says, death works in me, but life works in others. Now that's talking about intercession. But this is saying now how to walk, how to walk. You know, Romans 5 through 8 tells us who we are. It tells us that we don't live. It's Christ that lives in us. Cause, so that gives us our being. See, we're so used to doing. Now he takes us to our being. That's who we are. Okay, now how does this walk out? How, how do I manifest the fruit of the Spirit? How do I manis, manifest God and Christ and not you know, my own thinking or, or uh, any, anything I do, I'm just going to call that Christ. Well, I think we have to be honest about that. How do we walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh, the Bible says? Because if you walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You won't fulfill that. Now, what's lust of the flesh? Well, lust of the flesh is the desires of the flesh. We might have uh, desires in our, fle in our flesh, you see. Okay, so um, we won't fulfill those. But why? Because we live in the law of spirit and life that supersedes the law of sin and death and the, and the lust that might pull us downward. We don't live there any longer. We live in the spirit. We don't live in the flesh. We live in the spirit because we live in who we really are, Christ in us. So it says, present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God. Well, Corinthians tells us that our body is holy and it is the, uh, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Wow. So it's holy. So uh, treat your body well. Now, don't be so body-minded that that's all you think of is your body and how to fix your body and how to make your body so perfect. I don't think it's about that. Although, I mean, they certainly treated the temple, uh, the Old Testament temple, they certainly took care of it. We do that too. It says, but present it to God as a living sacrifice. Now, we don't like that. We like, no, just wait a minute, not that. I don't want to be a living sacrifice, you know. But when you really have the love of Jesus inside you, you'll say, Lord, I don't care what it takes. I don't care what it costs me. I want you to liberate this person. I want you to, uh, to cause this person to be saved, to cause this person to know you, cause this person to know who you are. 
or this group of people really to know who they are in Christ or know their union with Christ, you see? So we'll, we have that desire and we, we present our body. Now, I don't know how you're going to use me. And uh, so I'll just watch and see, but I just present myself to you. Use me. You know, we, we often say that when, when we're new Christians, we say, use me. But as soon as he starts to use in your body, you might not like it. And we're, we're not supposed to like it. It's not supposed to be fun in the first part of it. But you present your, your body a living sacrifice and you, it will be a light affliction, whatever might come upon you. Because we're, we're meant to, uh, 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 it says that I might know him in the power of his uh, resurrection life inside of me, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering that I might be made conformable unto his death. So whatever it costs me, Lord, if it costs me rep my reputation, if it costs me money, however it might cost me, if it costs me um, nobody appreciates me, I mean, just think of Jesus. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. I often call him the loneliest man in the world. Now, he was not lonely because he certainly lived with his father. His father lived with him. I mean, he was one with his father. So he wasn't lonely in that sense, but outwardly his, he was. He suffered it. I mean, nobody understood him. His own came to, he came to his own. His own didn't even know him. And then it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by, renew, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, I think that's exactly what Paul means back in Romans 7. Let's go back to Romans 7. When he says at the very end of Romans 7, he cries out and realizes that he cannot live the Christian life from his flesh, you know, that it's weak, and he's wretched, he's wretched, trying to do it. It makes him a wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And then he sees, oh, I thank God. So this is a flashpoint in his life. He sees that Christ has already done it, the work at Calvary. And he can accept his life instead of Paul trying to live the life that Christ lives the life through him. And so, but, but he says it this way. So with the mind I serve, I myself serve the law of God. I myself serve the law of God with my mind. What mind? Well, um, Romans 8 says that the carnal mind is enmity against God. Now, that's, that's verse 11, uh, 7. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither can do it. So he could see that my own thinking, me trying to perform from my own carnal thinking, all I did... <laughs> I, I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm defeated because I can never please God that way. Never, never. But I can't, I'm not, I'm, I can't fulfill the law. I can't do it in myself. I live by the outer law and can't accomplish it in my, in my flesh. Oh, but wait a minute. If I can renew my mind to the truth of who I really am, then Christ is my life. Then I have a new mind of the Spirit. If I've received his life, I've already also received his mind. Now, he had to remind the Corinthians that. He called the Corinthians carnal because they, they were still coming from the carnal mind, you see. That's why he said, he said, he says, now look, you've got the Holy Spirit. You've got the gifts of the Spirit even. You're even operating the power gifts. But you don't have the wisdom. You don't have wisdom. I always say power without wisdom can be foolish. Actually, Satan has power. It's dark power, but it sure is powerful. But he doesn't have the wisdom of God. He's, the, he's got the wisdom of this world. He is a personification of the wisdom of this world, you see. So power without wisdom can be very foolish. So we not only have Christ as the power source within us, the new nature, but he's also the new mind. So the only way we can serve God is by renewing our mind to the truth of who we are and be not conformed to the world. What is the world saying to us? The world is saying to us, you can perform, you can do it, you can be better, you can try harder. The world is, 
I mean, it says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Who's the he in the world? Isn't it Satan crying to us? Come on, come on. You can try harder. You, you see, he... See, we were a slave to sin. Now he's keep, he keeps trying to keep us to be slaves of this outer law. We're not slaves of this outer law. Christ came to fulfill the outer law, that he might give us the new law of spirit and life, that we might live and, because Christ has fulfilled the law inside of us, you see. So the only way to truly serve the Lord is, is present your body a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God. Lord, I'm your vessel. I mean, I know that the vessel is weak, but the vessel's meant to be weak, Paul tells us. Paul says if it's not weak and you're trying to do it in your own strength, it's not even the righteousness of Christ anyway. It has to be the righteousness of Christ by faith, you see. So present that weak vessel to God as a living sacrifice. And then it says, because uh, it's wholly acceptable to God. Some of the translations say it's really the worship. It's what God, it's, it's worshiping God. So the, if you want to worship God, present your body a living sacrifice. Oh, and it's wholly acceptable. And it's your reasonable service as, as a Christian, as a bought back, redeemed Christian per, person. You're no longer a slave to sin. You're enslaved to Mr. Righteousness now, you see. He set you free. He set you free so that you don't have to have the performance-based acceptance any longer. He accepts you free from the law. Okay. Then it says, be not conformed to this world. Now, this is, now we're going, going to go back to 12, 1 and 2 because it says this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice which is your reasonable worship or service. This is how you really worship God. We, we, we have these ideas of how to worship God. This is how you worship. And actually, Hebrews chapter 13 says the sacrifice of praise is how you worship God. Sacrifice means that life is a sacrifice to you. You've sacrificed to be here and doing this and doing that. Yet I praise God because he's my sufficiency. He's the abundant life in me anyway. Okay, and be not conformed to this world. The world will tell you the opposite. The world says that there is has pride in itself, has pride in an independent self. That's the mind of the world. A great big, puffed up, uh, performing, independent self. That's what Satan is. Satan says, I will be like the Most High God. I, the creation, will be like the Creator. I'm going to be greater than the Creator. And man thinks that because Satan has put that in his mind. So don't be conformed to that great big independent eye. That's high-mindedness. You better watch it when you're high-minded about anything, I'll tell you. But be transformed. If you want transformation, you want change, you, uh, and this word actually means metamorphosis. You see, it also connects with 2 Corinthians 3.18 that says this. That same word is in 2 Corinthians 3.18. Let me read it to you. It says this, But we with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed, that same word changed is metamorphosis, unto the same image from glory to glory. Well, we know that a butterfly comes out of a cocoon by the process of metamorphosis. It's reduced to nothing. It's really, it li liquefies and then comes back as a beautiful, wonderful butterfly. But it doesn't do it itself. <laughs> it's all in the seed of it. It's in, 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 and see, we've got the seed of Christ within us, and now it grows up really even unto glorification as we simply put our trust and faith in Him and be transformed by renewing your mind. I always say it's, Believing, it's instead of believing in my own resources, my own mental understanding, the Bible says lean not on your own understanding. So you have a whole other mind in Christ, the spirit mind. Spirit mind does not think the same way that a flesh mind thinks. Flesh mind thinks about me and mine and how I can achieve and who I am, you know, as a sufficient person. 
the mind of the spirit realizes that the Holy Spirit, you see, you, you, your mind is on Christ. You're Christ-centered, Christ-minded, and not me-minded. You're Christ-minded. You're God-purpose-minded. What's the purpose for me, God? You're my Father now. What's your purpose for me now? That's what we're minded of. We're no longer minded. That's the mind of the Spirit. The mind of the flesh is, oh, please, don't. What's happening to me? Me, 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 me. It's all about me. We got to get over ourselves. It's not about me. Be transformed by knowing you really have the mind of Christ. Now, let me tell you an uh, experience I had. I don't know, some time ago, I was inundated with bad thoughts. I call them satanic thoughts because Satan speaks to us in first person in our mind. So a bad thought came in my mind. It's like an arrow comes in my mind. Now, I don't identify those thoughts as me because I know they're not coming from me. They're, if they're always putting me down or, tr or asking me to strive to accomplish something and try harder and be a better person in my own strength, you see, I know that's not coming from Christ. It's coming from the Satan. So I know how to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I know how to do that. Well, I would take that thought captive and I'd say, no, um, really, that's not the truth. And, um, and then I would say the truth. Well, another thought would take come in my mind. And then as soon as I would replace that thought, then 10 more would take its place. And I was like bombarded like this, thought after thought after thought. And I said, Lord, I'm going crazy. I'm losing my mind. And he said, oh, good. Now lose your carnal thinking and lose that mind and realize you have a whole nother mind. You have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of the Lord. You have his mind already. Now access it. Take it. James says, if any man lacks wisdom, ask of God. Don't waver. Take it. That's a part of your inheritance as a Christian. You have his mind. So on any, any, so, so I said, well, wait a minute. Then I'm not going to replace thoughts when they come in my mind because they're just coming in my natural mind. Satan can attack my natural mind. Oh, but he can't attack the mind of Christ. And I'm saying, okay, I'm going to switch minds. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stand in what I'm thinking. I'm going to lean on the mind of Christ. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. I'm going to say, I, I'm going to ask of God and say, Lord, what is your mind on this? And I know you'll give it to me because you say you will, because that's a part of my inheritance. And I'm going to wait. Now that's renewing. Instead of renewing thoughts, I, re I exchange minds. You see, so that's really what this means. Be transformed by that. Be transformed by renewing your mind to the truth. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to end up all of Romans because I need to go ahead and finish this and get on to the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the books of James afterwards. So much is misunderstood in that little book of James. Everybody, all the grace people want to rip it out of their Bible. Well, we can take another look and see exactly that, gra that James and, and, and um, Paul are really saying the same things. They're just coming from two different angles. So I'm going, to, I'm going to go into James. So I really want to go there. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because I've talked with you about who you are. I've talked with you about renewing your mind, walking in the truth, renewing your mind to the truth. And when the lie comes, say, no, Jesus, you, I've got a new mind. And because Christ has made unto you wisdom. And so, and wisdom is what transforms you. It's, it's the new consciousness that you have in Christ is the Christ consciousness that actually transforms you and causes you to know God's ways. And listen to what it says. Be transformed by renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You want to know what the will of God is? You better renew your mind to the truth or exchange minds and say, Oh, Lord, you know, it, it's not what I think. It's not what I understand. Give me your understanding. Give me your wisdom. Give me, speak to me. Speak to me your wisdom. What is your wisdom on this? What is your mind on this? I want to know your heart on this. Share that with me, Lord. And I'm telling you, the Lord will share it with you. But you've got to listen because it's oftentimes a still, small voice. The mind of the Spirit, like uh, Elijah found out, it's not a big voice. It's not in the wind. It's not in the earthquake. 
It's in the still, small voice. So listen, listen. I, but, uh, but Paul is saying, I beg you, I beg you, listen to that still, small voice. Be not tra- uh, conformed to this world, what the world says about you, what anybody else says about you, but what God says about you. And you stand on that, and you will move from glory to glory to glory. That's how we manifest the fruits of the Spirit. And that's where we're going next. We're going in the book of James. But let me finish up. Okay, 12. I'm not going to say much more in 12. I could go verse by verse. There's lots of great, wonderful verses. You read these verses. 13 is talking about... um, You know, just our um, judicial systems that we have in the rulers of this world and how it says, let every soul be subject to the higher powers. It means like the policemen. And um, we don't want to. We don't want to submit to what the uh, president says or what our governor says or what the high courts say or what the Supreme Court say. We, you know, actually... We don't like it at all, so we've got a lot of, we got to do some praying there. we got to do some interceding there. But however, there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So when the problem comes, well, the intercessors better get on their toes because, um, you know, we could be headed, we're going down, down, down with how America is going. So, but still, I mean, in the days of, of Rome, when Rome had dominion over um, uh, Jerusalem and over Israel, you see, I mean, they, Jesus says, I don't fight that way. I don't fight and, you know, I don't fight that way. I fight by, learn to fight by faith. I had to learn that my fighting, and I don't, see, I'm not fighting flesh and blood. I'm fighting principalities and powers. They, they're coming down on our nation. So the intercessors, we better rise up and we better speak the word of faith and as God gives it to us and find out his mind on what he intends to do with us. So that's for sure. So, um, and, uh, and, and then 14 starts talking about uh, the law of love. It's, it's, it's talking about don't stumble your brother. I mean, th- these are just common sense. If you're really in the spirit, you wouldn't even need to hear these things. If you're really walking in the spirit, you'll know better. You're not going to be proud and pompous and and think that you can, you can well, because I'm so free, then I can act this way and you stumble your brother. That's not the point. We love one another. And things are, uh, I, and, and I love this in 14. This is a great verse in chapter 14, verse 14. It says, I know that I am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteems anything unclean, to him it is unclean. But the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So things might be right for us to eat. Some people can eat it. Some people can't. Some people can maybe drink a glass of wine. Some people that would be awful. Don't just just love one another and you'll, you won't stumble one another because love, when you love your brother, you will not stumble him. You'll do because you'll want the best for him. You won't be thinking of yourself and the fact that I'm so free to be able to do these things. Well, no, you think of your brother. I mean, don't be high-minded there. Then then Paul uh, kind of finishes up and uh, I mean, there's there's just wonderful, wonderful things that he finishes up with. And in 15 verse 29, he says, I am sure that when I come into you, and he's talking to, to the Romans because he hadn't gone there yet. He finally does go there and there's, there's where he's beheaded. So when I come to you, that I come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. So that's what we intend to do when we come. If anybody would want us to come to, to your fellowship, to your home, to your church fellowship, to do, uh, we do conferences, I do women's retreats, I do conferences, you know, my husband and I will come, we will come, and we will, we would love to come and share with you all if you would have us, so, and we will come with the blessing of the fullness of the gospel, we certainly will, and so, but I love the end of Romans, and I'm going to end it up in verse 19 of chapter 16. It says, for your obedience has come abroad unto all men. He's talking about the Romans. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but 
Yet I would have you wise unto that which is good, but simple towards evil. Now, I love that verse. I've always been loving that verse. I'm going to come back to that verse. That's one of my favorite. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The God of grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And then he finishes by saying this. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandments of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. So now let me, I love that ending. Love that ending. Well, let's go back to this one little verse. Be wise unto that which is good and simple towards evil. We don't have to fight evil. We're not fighting flesh and blood. We're standing in who we are. Look at Ephesians chapter 6 and you will see that, uh, that warfare, spiritual warfare is not engaging, not... <laughs> not uh, defen uh, offensive, offensive. It's, def it's defensive. It's standing, defending who you really are and standing in Christ, you see. It doesn't march out and fight Satan at all is what I'm trying to say. It's standing in who you are. You take off the sword and the shield and you stand in Christ who is your life. Thank you for joining me and may you come again as we go into the next verses and chapters that we're going to study. Thank you for joining me. May God richly bless you. Goodbye. The more I try, the more I fall. You've been watching The Liberating Secret with Sylvia Pierce. We want to send a special thank you to all our supporters to make this program possible. If you've been blessed by this program and would like to contact Sylvia, you can write her at P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. That's P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. You can also find more of Sylvia's teachings on our website. The web address is www.theliberatingsecret.org. That's www.theliberatingsecret.org. And be sure to watch again right here, Monday through Friday, at the same time, for The Liberating Secret with author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. So until next time, may God richly bless you.